So having it opened up really helped to cool it off. It just retains a lot of the heat on the inside. It's not nearly as efficient. Couldn't even hold the thing because it was so hot. In this box, I have a radiator. It's exactly like the radiator video that I did on what's in a radiator. Uh, she's just smoking and a pissing. Check that out. All the fluid's going through all of these little itty bitty veins. This is a really good cooler because you've got coolant going through the middle and you've got all the fins to take it to the wall. I got a bunch of comments, as you can see, asking what about those cheap radiators. I bought a cheap radiator. Fits the exact same gear making model. It was a 2002 Honda Civic. So we'll pull this out. We'll take a look. This was about 40 bucks. It's way cheaper. What I really like about this radiator, just right off the bat, the packaging's good. Cardboard, it's recyclable material, it's sustainable stuff. I bought these tools and I bought this radiator specifically to make this video because that's what y'all wanted to see and I'm curious too. This tool here closes the door. This tool here opens the door. This pulls the little tabs back. So we're gonna go about it the right way. Instead of cutting it apart and hacking it, we're gonna do it right. Now what are these, you might ask? Well, each of these tanks on the end, you have to clamp them down and hold them in place with a clamp so that you can follow up and close the door. Can you imagine the carpal tunnel and the arm failure if you were to do this day in and day out? This is ridiculous. This is like arm pump overload. This is what rock climbers do for fun to strengthen and because they're broke. Well, trad climbers, their gear is so expensive. Trad climbing is traditional climbing where you have all those cams and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, nobody wants to watch this. It's so stinking long and tedious. loosened all those little tabs so that we can pull the tank off. So once you do pull the tank off, here's what we've got. It looks similar. It actually looks really similar. I bought a cheap radiator trying to show you know what the difference is and I got this sucker way cheap. Less than half of what I paid for the other one. You see you've got your rubber o-ring in here and you've got all of your fins. So these ones actually stick up pretty far stick up way above so I wonder what the deal is with that so if they stick up too high I wonder if it would create adverse overheating early versus later I don't know so how heavy-duty are these Wow they're really thin so there's a difference in strength I don't think you'd ever want to rebuild this one I thought this would be a lot worse than what it is let's get into this this is what we were really interested in let's see what how they did I'm actually really surprised to see the structure be similar. I'm going to say this was the cheapest radiator I could find. Okay, how am I going to get this out then? The other one came out pretty easy, so in theory you should be able to rock this up and out. Am I doing something wrong here, or how did they get this to happen? If I stretch it. Hmm. Son of a gun. How did they even get this in there? I don't see, yeah, there's a little scrape mark there. So in theory, you should be able to rock this up and out. Son of a gun. Alright, there's one of them. Just do the same thing. So we've got her pried out. There's your radiator tank. I don't even know what to do with any of this. 
once I cut into this, it's going to tell us what we're looking for, but there's no way I'm going to be able to put this back together. I mean, I bought the clamps and everything to be able to do that. Dang. Hmm. Well, it's hop to it. I could always close these off and, like I say, have it be a manual radiator. I kind of want to take some chunks out of this, too, and do the same testing. Side by side, you can see that it looks like it's a lot tighter here than this. These look like they're a little bit loose, and clearly this... If I go with a screwdriver and pry this out... I mean, it just comes out and just crushes into oblivion. I mean, just really independently. And it just seems like there's a lot of drag. Okay, and then it's just, it falls apart into nothing. When I do the same thing here, it comes up pretty clean. I mean, it's just, I can't get through all the layers here. I mean, I'm not even getting through the thing. There we go. Let's try it again. Space it out a little. But it's just like, psh, I don't know. Just seems like this is really, really thin stuff. I mean, it's strong. I mean, either one kind of dimples about the same. But let's talk about tubing now. So with this tubing, if I put a screwdriver to it, put a little ding here, I don't want to get cut up, but I don't know, it takes a little doing getting into it. If I, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm trying way, way harder on this and it's just not doing anything. But once you get through, I mean, you can get through it. Interesting. The resistance to initial impact here is pretty dang strong. Here, it's just not. I mean, I can just work my screwdriver right through it. When I go to do that here, I mean, I'll just go along the surface and nothing happens. So rock chip resistance and stuff, this is a lot stronger. What about other aspects of the construction? This is aluminum, this is aluminum. I think a lot of it boils down to just how strong it is. That's pretty strong, that's not. I think it's just a lower grade aluminum. This is a lot more resilient against impact damage. Let's do some more fence stripping. There's just not as many of them. It's not as dense. It's like if you have five pencils together, it's hard to break versus three. This is more like the three pencils. So let's get into the cooler of it, shall we? Ooh, that's hot. Uh, what can I hold that with? I want to keep going. <laughs> I had a rag in here somewhere. I'd say the last one, the copper one, it seemed like I could cut it in half and just go right to it. I didn't have any heat accumulation. I mean, that's the whole job of this thing is to get rid of the heat. So you can see there, it's really thin between the two walls. I don't see a lot in terms of fins. There's certainly not as much room for the fluid to travel. There is some fins in there, but it's not as pronounced. All right. So the cooler does make a big difference. I was impressed there's so much copper in the other one. That's way cool. Look at all that. This one has zero copper. It's got some I think this is aluminum. It's really thick. I mean, the inner part, this is still hot. So you've got some fins for it to travel through to aid in the cooling and the heat transfer. But it's, it's just not the same. I mean, clearly there's holes in it. And it's not the whole length of the tube. There's just a little bit right there. This is still pretty hot to the touch. The other wasn't. As far as buying a cheap radiator versus an expensive one, I think it's important to note that there's tarnish. There's all kinds of stuff that's on this that shouldn't be there. But you don't want that kind of an environment for your transmission fluid. I mean, yeah, it's going to cool the fluid, but it's going to contaminate it going through this. This is a brand new one that's never been used. But whatever this is made out of seems like it's a different material than what this is. Is that steel? It could be. No, it's not steel. I don't know what that is. This is aluminum, pretty sure. See the difference in cross-sectional area? All right, let's see what's in the rest of this, if there's any other. Yeah, see, there you go. That's better. 
I mean, that's more corrosion, but better cooling. See, isn't that funny? I cut open this part, and I'm like, wow, there's really no fins in it. And then I follow through to do the rest, and the whole rest of it has fins, just not right there. And a lot of corrosion, too. Ooh, you nasty. But you can see where there's been moisture in there. Looks like this was put together in a really humid place. It's brand new, it looks dirty. I'm really glad that I cut the whole thing apart to show the difference. You can see where this is clean and non-corroded, and that's where there wasn't any cooling. It seems like everybody's turning to cheaper alternatives, but the cheaper alternatives, are they cheaper in the long run? So in summary, if you have an automatic transmission car, buy a good radiator, don't buy a cheap radiator. It resembles what the other one is, but the materials aren't the same. This just does not have anywhere near the cooling capability of the copper, and it's so thick that it retains the heat. I mean, I can hold on to it now. It's just now, I, this one's cool, cool. This one's warm. So here's the cool one. See, it's just cool as a cucumber. And then here's the one that was cut a little more recently. Well, you can already see it. I mean, it's still really hot, and there's a lot of heat accumulation. So there's the hot one that was cut a little while ago. And then here's the other one over the top of it that's been cooled. Um, the plastic tank, I haven't really investigated much with that. We didn't do the same twist test or toughness test. So we'll give this one a good twist and see what it does. That's not bad. I mean, these things have to be a little bit elastic because of the pressure cycles and heat cycles they go through. But that's not bad. That's pretty respectable. So, good job, cheap radiator company. No, not all cheap radiator companies are the same. Um, but this one did... Wow, that's tight. This one did pretty dang good, all things considered. So here we've got a bunch of Teflon tape. I don't think they had a lot of faith in this holding. You don't see Teflon tape on a lot of them. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned something new. I know I did. Viva Las Vegas! Da -da -da -da. Hey, I'm in Las Vegas today. I got a cool opportunity with Pennzoil to come out here and check out the Cobalt 400 and cheer for the 22 car Joey Logano from uh, Morseville, North Carolina. Way cool guy. Awesome guy. Speaking of cool guys, uh, Charles the Humble Mechanic is going to be there as well as a couple of others. You'll have to tune in to my videos coming up after the race. I'm going to do some videos on some of the cool tech that Pennzoil is coming out with. Um, I'm going to keep you guys posted and... Uh, Got some new camera equipment coming. We got some new high quality, better microphone. Uh, no glare kind of stuff coming at you. So stay tuned. We got some exciting things in the works.